Pectoralis minor is one of the most powerful muscles that I would say 80% of the clientele that walk into my office that are female and about 50% that are male are dealing with tension in the pectoralis minor. Why is that? Well, especially as a woman, when we're a child, kids play and have a good time. But in many, many instances, and I have only sisters, I have only daughters, and I've watched this, but during puberty, they get nervous. They get self-conscious. The girls start to cross their arms. Their breasts are too big, they're too small, or whatever. And they get nervous, and they start to cross their arms. Well, what happens is, in this arm crossing, is they get in the habit of shortening pec minors. Then they, going through puberty, they go to school. And all day long, their arms are in front of them. Then they get a driver's license, they learn to drive. And they go home, and they instant message their friends on the keyboard. And they're using their arms in front of them all the time. They go home and sleep on their sides. And this constant motion of having that shoulder in front of them shortens the pec minor muscle. Puts pressure on the brachial plexus, and they go, you yeah, know, my arms feel kind of weird and tingly in the morning or during the day, and, you know, those kinds of things. And those are, those are cues for us that they may have some issues going on there. So besides the, tech, the technique we teach you today, we've got to make sure they get the stretch going on as well and get that stretching to pull those muscles back, elongate them. If you see your daughter or some other client of yours that's really pulling those, you know, into shortened position, mention it to them and show them in, in a mirror what that does to them and that will make a big difference and help them out quite a bit. Pectoralis minor hypertonicity uh, and spasms, let's talk about that for a second. It, it draws the shoulders forward and anteriorly rotates them when they're, in, when they're tight. When it fights against the rhomboids, it results in occipital headaches. The person gets the spasms in the base and the headaches at the base. They also get false carpal tunnel, as we discussed earlier, uh, and postural deviation. So just that tension back there alone can actually, you know, even an imbalanced uh, tension on one side can actually, has the rhomboid starts to fight back and suddenly it, it pulls out one of, the, one of the vertebra out of location. So you've got to really realize that that one muscle has a huge impact on, on the body. Rhomboids, when they're tight on the back between the shoulder blades, patients that have spasms, trigger points, often report they feel like they're having a heart attack. Now, I know this. I've been teaching this, but when it happened to me, a while back, when I actually felt it, I thought, my God, I'm having a heart attack. I couldn't breathe very deep. This huge pain in my chest. I thought I, thought I was going to die. <laughs> and I went to a chiropractor friend of mine. I said, ah, maybe I should go to the hospital. And he, he goes, <laughs> put his thumb in there. And he goes, you know better. And sure enough, I did know better. But when you feel it, you think, dear God, I'm having a heart attack. So when that rhomboid gets a spasm, it's really, really limiting. It's hard to breathe. It can shoot through your chest, and you think you know, you've got all kinds of problems going on, right? It's just when that, what happens when that pinches. That also, you've got the rhomboid pecs fighting, limited flow, nerve problems going down the arm. What happens when you have a heart attack? Pain in your left arm, which really causes the heart attack sensation. It's actually a trigger point in the rhomboid that causes that heart attack sensation. When it's, when it's, when it's seized up and causes that trigger point, that pain will go right through into the heart area, and it'll cause you to not be able to breathe very deep, and it's really, really intense. One of the simple ways to take care of it is to get a, either a rock, a smooth rock, river rock, and freeze it in the freezer and lay your back on it. Maybe a golf ball, lay back on that and put some pressure on the floor and really push against it. Better yet, get a massage therapist to put their elbow into it and take a deep, deep breath into that and to open up the airways, take a deep breath, squish it, and get that trigger point to release. And then the breathing comes back almost instantaneously. It's, 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 it's pretty, pretty powerful. In addition uh, to doing self-treatment and having a, the, the pec work as well as the rhomboid work done, it's really imperative that you know people all day long, we're shortening our pec minor muscles, that we go and do doorway stretches. Now, many, many therapists, and especially physical therapists, teach doorway stretches or corner stretches like this. And that's great. It's a great stretch for your pec major. I want your pec minor to get stretched. And if you kind of visualize with me this little muscle that's right here, and if I go into a corner or a door frame, I'm going to get some stretch. But if I put it down this way, I get a much longer pendulum action. I can't do that here. It doesn't, it, my shoulder won't allow me, but once I drop the arm back, I can. So I'm going to grab a door frame, the narrower the better. Grab that door frame, feet right in the center, and lean forward and pull my shoulders back and hold that. And if I can do that, hold it for 20 or 30 seconds, two or three times a day, it'll really make a difference. I had a, a young woman who was in my clinic, and she just she just didn't get it that all of her problems were her pec minors and I'd work on them and she'd get better and come back in two weeks and the same problem I said are you doing your doorway stretches no so I took her into my office put her hands on my photocopier made a copy he said take this home cut it out 
you know, color it, tape it to your door frames, and she did. And literally every day she saw her own hands, and, oh yeah, and she'd stretch herself out and her pain went away. So I realized that all that, that plethora of problems is going to come from just those two muscles fighting each other. So let's go ahead and uh, work on um, the pec minor and the rhomboid and balance that. We can do it a couple of different ways. One is on the table, and another one is, in a, is seated in a chair. You can do both these techniques either way. It's ideal to get them on the table to get direct contact, but you can be seeing someone in their office with their clothes on and still work on both those muscles, stretch them out, and get relief. So let's go try that. So to get the pec minor to release, we want to first get their arm just to really feel heavy and weightless, and uh, we want to control it. If they tend to hold it up, just don't say let go, but uh, go ahead and get them to let the weight just drop. So we're holding that weight and give them use words like heavy or there we go. Good. Now, I used to teach this with a straight arm technique. It's a lot harder on me, and I don't want to have to overuse them and hurt my body to get this technique done. So we're just going to go ahead and bend the arm at the elbow here. And we're going to isolate uh, pec minor. And to do that, you're going to come right here at the coracoid process. And it just drops two fingers wide all the way down. And it just runs from here to here. So pec minor is pretty narrow. As we come up, we can isolate that. And on Yulia, it's actually, it's actually spasmed a little bit. So she's going to really enjoy this. And we can take our fist with soft knuckles then place it here and just drop the arm up over the head. Come back up, press, drop it down. Now she may not feel that. If she can't feel that pressure, we'll help isolate that to enhance the experience, right? So we'll take our thumbs, perhaps. Uh, you can use your thumb work or you can use fingertip work, whatever comfortable for you. Isolate that muscle, pin it down, and then stretch it. Now she'll feel that a bit more. Feel that different? Again, the fingers, drop it over the top. And so you get a good stretch that way. And of course, the doorway stretch is that much more important as well to add for them for homework. But again, fingertips up over the top. Don't use a straight arm. It's too much pressure on your own. You'll actually hurt yourself over time. Soft knuckles, fingertips, or thumb work. Try to be careful not to do it this way. It'll feel like you're choking them sometimes unless they're used to this technique. But just drop it over. Great.